long drive, well, it's been 12, 13 hours to get here. We've got Glenn here with us. Been a long time, mate, 20 odd years. Yeah, you look back and it's like, where did that 20 years go, eh? Yeah, exactly. Try to say that to the young guys. So you just <laughs> make use of every minute because 20 years goes like a heartbeat. You yeah, can't, um, can't make up lost time. When you asked me there last week, I jumped at the chance because I know I know what was to offer. Yeah. You know the bulls you had and the, the caliber of the bulls, they've only just got better with well time and age. And yeah. Even though it's sort of it's going not to too special. far as a crow flies where we got them 20 years ago. I tell you what, it's, uh, the colours totally different from down home. They're pretty much brown down. Brown there. Yeah. Oh no, they've had the rain up here. It's looking good. The cavemen in their natural habitat. <laughs> Frolicking. <laughs> Setting up the camp here, ready for the next the bull hunt. We're just about to start. Do some hunting off the boat this evening. See if you can't spot anything. Catch some fish. AC Barrow Invader. So, uh, what? Um, awesome little mate. Mm. Cracker first fish for the trip. Yeah. Boys are setting up the boat ready to go for a late afternoon fish. Beautiful little bit of river that leads onto a big lake. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you how to catch a fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are spikes on them, oh god bash. Yeah, you gotta lip him. Oh! Too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Get that thing in. With dark approaching all too fast, it was time to go back to camp, cook up a feed, and get ready for an early start the next morning. It wasn't long before we saw our first groups of clean skinned cattle, so we hitched our boat up into a nearby gully and started a long walk up around the nearby ridge to try and get our wind right. Just like any other wild animal, clean skinned cattle hate the smell of humans. One little sniff will see them bolting into the nearest patch of land tanner and weed. With good cattle sign everywhere we looked, we slowly made our way up through the grass trees and lantana onto the nearby ridge. From there, we had the wind in our face, so we slowly checked back down the next gully and headed down towards the water. It's been a long time, mate. 20, 20 odd years? 20 years. 1998. Here we are back again. <laughs> Bigger bulls this time. Two bulls last time. Let's try for two bulls this time. Yeah, sounds good. The humidity though. She's up around what, 90%? Yeah, 90 plus. <laughs> probably, what's it say? 9 o'clock, 8.30? Yeah, 9 o'clock and it's probably up to 36. Yeah. About 90% humidity, so it's, it's good. Oh, March flies are just coming at us now. <laughs> a lot of sign up through here. A lot of sign, yeah. No a of lot of sign. We've probably seen, I don't know, 30 odd clean skins this morning, but they only yeah. sort of just been calves and cows and seen one sort of bull around the three year old. Sign everywhere. Really good sign. Trees broken off. 
rubs, scrapes, everything. It's got to be here somewhere. As we headed down the bottom of the gully, we soon cut fresh bull tracks through the short weeds. And not long after that, we came to a big scrape where a bull had been busy digging into the side of this earth bank. We realised he wouldn't be far away from here, so we decided to look down into the main creek. All of a sudden, there was a big bull right in front of us, in the creek, eating water lily leaves. A great bull with big horns and a beautiful coloured skin, but Glenn made the decision to let this one walk. That was, a, that was a crack of a bull mate, but yeah, just identical in coloration that bull I took before with you. So, but that was an awesome bull. Let's, let's look for a multicolour one. So. Yeah, well, that big black one we seen yesterday, I, I wouldn't pass him up today, so yeah. That was our second day, so plenty of, no shortage of cattle sign. We turned and headed further back up the main creek into an area where I knew there was a big red bull running. The problem with this area is the weeds are head high and it pays to have a good backup rifle with you. Stuart was carrying his 4570 lever action, which is perfect for this close quarter country. It wasn't long before we came across our next bull, a big old swinghorn fella. Every time we go out, it pours down rain. Just got onto a big swinghorn bull there, a big old Braford type bull. The two hanging down swinging horns. So I've seen a really big old black and tan bull up here that if it'll stop raining, we might get a chance to find him. Maybe. I don't mind it being so hot if it rains. Bad luck, we were down to about probably 60 off that massive ball. And something happened, I think he's just chasing that cow. Like he just chases a cow in season. And everything's getting going round. We'll try it down on the flat, but it's now getting too dark. Best ball I've seen so far. Yeah, ripper ball, ball top ball. class. So thick, the land tanner and the weed here is so thick. Day two, dawn fine and clear, so we were soon making our way back up to the top of the biggest gully system on the property. It was apparent there was cattle right in front of us, so I urged Glenn to slow right down to a crawling pace and be prepared because anything could happen in this situation.
As if on cue, the kookaburras broke into song and this provided cover for us as we moved through the tall grass and dry leaves. All of a sudden, right in front of us, was a black and white ball. Within seconds, this bull just got too close for comfort. Notorious for their bad attitude when cornered or wounded, this is a situation where you can't afford to make mistakes. Glenn kept his cool and waited for the perfect shot to present itself. For reasons known only to the bull, at that stage he turned and headed straight back up the creek. So all we could do was get on his trail, move round the edge of the water and see if we could get a second chance. We slowly followed up on the tracks of that big bull and it wasn't long before we found them bedded down, right on the edge of the water. With our wind perfect for once, we moved into position and watched as more clean-skinned cattle made their way around the side of the creek to bed down with this big bull. From there on in, it was slow and steady across this dry, hard ground. Glenn wanted to get in under 30 metres, and once he did, it was a matter of just waiting until this big bull stood back up. After what seemed like an eternity, the second bull in the mob, a younger black bull, stood up and shifted positions. It wouldn't be long before the second bull did the same. This is our world. This is our wild country. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you turn on your notification bell, you won't miss any more of our upcoming videos.